We are here at Nola Motorsport Park for the round three and four of the Mazda Road to Indy. Most drivers were here in February for Cooper Tire Winterfest, so we're expecting the competition bar to be raised up big time in both USF 2000 and Pro Mazda. We saw it last weekend in St. Petersburg, and I can't wait to see it again. Hey, time flies when you're having fun. Let's go over to Joel and see what's happened since St. Petersburg. Thanks guys, we're in the NOLA paddock with the new 2016 Mazda MX-5, where the big story this weekend is the fact that we're actually here. This weekend is the first time Mazda Road to Indy has stopped at NOLA Motorsports Park during the season. The 2.74 mile, 13 turn circuit is located less than a half hour away from downtown New Orleans. NOLA Motorsports Park is a welcome addition to the calendar, but it's also a familiar one. Pro Mazda and USF 2000 raced here in February during Winterfest. Pabst Racing driver Jake Edson missed out on the title after a mechanical failure, but he started 2015 on a high note with a pair of victories at St. Pete. He leads the USF 2000 standings over teammates Aaron Tielitz and Winterfest champion Nico Jamin. Pro Mazda points leader Neil Aberico sat out Winterfest but shined in the season openers. His sweep at St. Pete earned the early points lead with Cape Motorsports and Wayne Taylor Racing. For most of the field, this weekend is deja vu. But for others, the entire Road to Indy experience is completely new. Pro Mazda 15-year-old Mexican Pato Award and 18-year-old Santiago Arudia from Uruguay joined Team Pelfrey after only one test. Both of them earned top fives in their first race weekend at St. Pete. That's it for the latest news and headlines, but remember to download the new Road to Indy TV app and follow us on Twitter so you can stay up to speed. How's it going guys? NOLA Motorsports Park, here we are, 2.73 mile road course. First time for the Verizon IndyCar Series and the Mazda Road to Indy Ladder to be here. Very, very exciting and I can't wait to see this. This track was actually designed by Alan Wilson, the same guy that did Barber Motorsports Park and Miller Motorsports Park, two of the best facilities in the country. So right now I'm going to get to take this car, the Mazda 3, around the track. So let's go check it out. Zoom, zoom, baby. All right, so we're about to head out here on track. NOLA Motorsports Park. Let's see what she's got in this Mazda 3. Here we go, exiting pit lane, looking on the front straight, making sure there's no USF 2000 or Pro Mazda cars. There is nothing. All right, so here we go. Coming up to the 500 board. Turn one, incredibly tough corner. Tough to get a visual reference across the middle of this corner here. Oh, so easy to overshoot there. Bring it slightly back for turn two. On power through turn two here. Coming up now into turn three, another hard, hard break zone. Very tough corner because it kind of opens in radius, but it's a long duration corner. Wow, this Mazda 3 gearbox is beautiful. Very easy to flip the throttle on the downshifts here. Into turn four, just a soft, soft brake hit here. Down to second gear. Oh, man. Rolling a lot of speed here. Back on power. Oh, drifting a bit wide here. Made a slight driver error there. And now coming up towards turn five. Okay, you got to turn in pretty much flat and then back on power, back on power. Oh, a slight moment there. Man, this Mazda 3 handles pretty well. Okay, now turn six, such a tough corner. Oh, and we're drifting wide, and we're drifting wide. I thought I was in a USF 2000 car, but then I realized I've got less grip here. This track is tricky this morning. Whew. Just went through turn seven there. As we turn in here to turn eight, very, very tough. Got to aim for turn nine, turn in, and we're through and onto the back stretch. And this is where you'll see the majority of the passes being made. It's a very, very good opportunity. The track is so wide, it's almost a bit like St. Petersburg, the front straightaway there. This is where you'll be aiming. You'll be looking at your gauges, checking your temps, and then lining up that pass to make the move to get one spot better. Coming up into turn 10 now again, important to brake late here, be good on the brakes. And you can actually carry a lot of speed through the middle of this corner. And then turn 11, whoa! Moving around a little bit on me here, There's some small puddles on the road here. And then turn, flick it into turn 12. Use a little bit of curve here, get the car rotated. And then we're coming into turn 13 right now again. Big test of patience, big test of patience. Gonna run it wide here. All over those curves, oh, that's so rough. And then we're onto the front straightaway. I can't wait to get started and uh, here we are back in pit lane and uh, let's park this thing up. All right, so that was a pretty exciting lap in that Mazda 3, and I'm here with Neil Alberico. Neil, you didn't do the Winterfest, but you're here now for the main race at NOLA Motorsports Park, and 
What's your favorite corner on the track? I might have to go with turn 10. I mean, it's a hard break zone coming out of the last corner where before that we're going 140 miles an hour or something to a super hard break zone down a couple gears. And what track would you compare this to if you raced on any other track? Is there any comparison? It's hard to say. I mean, this place is pretty unique. I mean, they've made a few changes here since last year, obviously, since IndyCar is running now. Um, um, I think all for the better, so it's, it's unlike any other place. And is there a least favorite corner on the track for you? I don't know. I mean, the new asphalt they put down is not as grippy as last year, so maybe maybe if I were to pick and choose, that would be my least favorite. But the rain's gone down any, anyway, so it doesn't sound like we're going to have too much grip to begin with. All right, that's Neil Alvarico from NOLA Motorsports Park. Hey, guys, I'm here with J.F. Thorman from Andurity Autosport. Tell us a little bit, introduce us a little bit about the team, how you guys got involved in the Master Road to Indy. Tell us a little bit. Actually, it began back in 2007 and with our IndyCar program. They allowed us to have more test days for the Indy cars by running an Indy Lights. And then we realized, you know what, this is actually kind of cool. It helps us develop young drivers. And we got together and he said, you know, we should do the whole ladder. So we started an F2000 team. And then as those drivers moved up, we, we got into the Mazda. And, and that's been very successful for us. Um, you know, we had the 13-win season with Matty Brabham. We're like a factory team. They come to our shop and, and they, get, they get to learn from the big brothers and, and sisters and we really immerse them in all aspects. Not only in the behind the wheel, but also with our sponsors. They come to our sponsor summits, they speak in front of big crowds. So we really try to form them and we've been very successful. Virtually every driver that's ever driven for us up into lights has gone on to IndyCar at some point in time. We're very proud of that fact and we really believe in that development ladder because the U.S. was greatly lacking that. For those who don't know, where, do you, where is hometown for the team? Uh, Indianapolis. And, and there's any traditions that people don't know that you guys do before a race or before heading to a weekend and you know a big party, a cookout or something that no, is traditional? No, I think traditional? You, we're, we're too intense. You're too like intense? A liar. We're always asking them, we want to win this next race. And, now, you know, for we, what we, I understand, your relation with uh, Michael is, is really interesting on how you guys got together to work. We actually were teammates back in 1979. So that's is why that, I have all this gray hair and look the way I look. And, uh, and is, that, is that true? That you know, it's, it's true. He beat me badly, so that made me uh, realize that maybe I shouldn't be a driver and I should just stay in the sport uh, assisting him. So. Um, I, run, I run the business unit and he does the go fast part, although for the Mazda Road to Indy, because he knows that I have a, a real love of the smaller cars and did it myself, he lets me run, run that pretty much. What do you think is what sets you guys apart from any other team? What is the inspiration? What is the motivation of what you do every day? I think, well, you know, the other teams are, are pushing us hard and, and, and we get beaten, you know, so the motivation is like it is in the big cars. Is we want to compete, we want to do well. But we really want to, to develop the young drivers so that they can stay in our team all the way through. So that, that pretty much motivates us. This season we'd like to get the championship again. Uh, you know, one year without it makes you hungry. And, uh, so we're, uh, we're really pushing for that and we believe with the two guys we have that they're, they're going to work well together. And, and we had a little rough start in St. Pete, but so far everything has gone well today. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So as you see, Andretti Autosport giving a clear path on racing to any driver who joins their team. Now back to Europe, wherever you are. We're hanging out here at Ralph Brennan's Ralph's on the Park in City Park here in New Orleans. And I've got two of the cooler dudes of the Mazda Road Indy right now, Daniel Burkett and Jake Edson. Guys, hanging out, it's a little chow. Jake, let's start with you. How did you find your way into karting that would eventually get you here into the Monster Road to Indy? Well, living in Colorado, you know, there's not a whole lot of go-karting out there. But I got into it uh, through drag racing. And we noticed there was a go-kart track at the, uh, the end of the speedway. Didn't but you say your mom actually brought you mom, out too? Yeah, my mom was the first one who brought me That's there. That's awesome. So, I decided to go back there and actually buy one and just kind of took off from there. Straight in, jumping right in. All right, Daniel, you're a little different, obviously, because your dad was a racer, I know that. I think yeah. he ran Formula V kind of an in-the-family kind of thing was early on when you knew that uh, that's what you wanted to do. Some of my earliest memories are being at the racetrack, playing in my little homemade sandbox, watching my dad do laps. So he decided the best idea possible was to buy two go-karts and go racing with his two kids, me and my sister Dana. Now, you come from that absolute Canadian hotbed of racing. 
Winnipeg, Manitoba. Dude, tell me about it. I mean, I can name at least zero, zero. Race, car, race car drivers that are from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Jake, you, what about, you look forward, like here, obviously the Verizon IndyCar Series, the Maserati Road Daily, is there somebody maybe in the IndyCar program that you, maybe you can, you can connect with a little bit? My mom, she's, uh, she was born and raised in Australia, and uh, so I was able to go down there a few times, makes me half Australian, okay. so I have dual right. citizenship. Nice. So I'd have to say like one of my more favorite drivers is gonna be Will Power. If you pull away from racing, let's talk about sports a little bit. You're from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Yep. You should be a Blue Bombers fan. And CFL. I am. I am. All right. All right. But you're also a Seahawks fan. You're 12th man. I am a 13th man almost. Because <laughs> I almost count as two men. I am, I am loud and proud, baby. You're, you're, a, C hey, you're a Seattle Seahawks fan. But I'm not a bandwagoner. I was born and raised a Seahawks fan. I do feel bad making this transition, of course, because Jake is from Colorado. That's where he spends his summers in Colorado. And I think there's a team in Colorado called the Denver Broncos. Super Bowl not 48. Yeah, just a couple yeah. years ago, if I'm not mistaken, you guys head to head. You had a great first quarter. You not were, you so were done. much. <laughs> you were done early. Yeah. There was a safety first play, baby. Are you, are you a Broncos fan? A hardcore? Absolutely. Or? You are. I mean, I was I was raised in Colorado. You know, diehard Broncos fan. Yep. Just I to see that. my team in the Super Bowl. Granted, it wasn't the best Super Bowl. But, I mean, I was so happy just to see the Broncos actually make it. He's thinking you out over here pretty good. I know, yeah. I know. I, can, I mean, there's not much What's I up, say. Jake? He's, what's up? You still <laughs> got two years in a row. You still got well, a good quarterback. Kinda, you can always come well, back. Kind of, yeah. All right, guys, let's let's wrap this up. But here's the question for you. Is, and we'll go back to racing. Where do you see yourself maybe next year, a couple years down the line? Uh, Well, really, we're not even looking at next year. We're really? just looking at, you know, just trying to, you know, get the championship this year. And, uh, you know, if we do, we do. If we don't, you know, uh, it's, I mean, it's racing. But we'll, uh, we'll find out. That's awesome, Al. Daniel, we'll wrap it up with you. You ran in the USF 2000, uh, Pro Mazda now, but also last year a little bit of uh, Mazda Atlantic racing as yeah. well. You won a championship. I won seven out of ten races last year. Like It was a huge confidence boost yeah. for me coming into this year. So you put the uh, car on the podium, your mm -hmm. first ever podium in the yeah. Mazda Road Dandy. It must have felt pretty darn good. Oh, man. Just to finally get the podium, it was so sweet, man. Yeah, well done. Guys, it's been great. Thank you so much for joining me here at uh, Ralph's in the Park. It's been fun. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, eh? Thanks, Rob. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to throw it over to JP. He's having a look around New Orleans. We are here, guys, at the French Quarter in New Orleans with my good friend... Anthony Martin. And... Jordan Lloyd from John Kaminsky Racing. We're going to show you around. This weekend, it's not just racing. It's a lot of food, entertainment, and nightlife. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Get some coffee. Yeah. You know, walk around and see this place. Sounds good. New Orleans, also known as the Crescent City, is one of the most unique cities in the United States. Founded in cultural influences from Europe, the Caribbean, Africa and more, its diversity is reflected in the people, food and the music. From strolling through historic neighborhoods and exciting festivals through the year, to gumbo and late nights in dark jazz clubs, New Orleans is definitely a place to visit. Oh, now we're talking. Look at that. Feel that? Yeah, you break it in half. This is good. I like it. So we've been walking around New Orleans, but we decided to stop here in Café du Monde to get some coffee and some goods. Beignet. Beignet. So, and get to know more about these guys. Um, it's not only racing here, so... All right, you got to wipe that thing off. <laughs> really? What is the motivation for you to keep doing what you do? Um, well, simply because I made it this far and you know people have said that uh, you know I can drive a car okay so what do you like the car. most in the car it would have to be the adrenaline and just the, the fear of it so one thing is just to continue racing in Australia and, and, and over there but another one is to take it seriously and say you know what let's leave the country and let's go to America you got to know him where uh, pretty much when we uh, when we met up at the airport uh, for our first test, yeah. we make really good teammates. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about New Orleans and this place? Pretty crazy. Uh, I'm definitely, I definitely like it. I'd come here more often if I could. USF 2000 got the action start in NOLA with the threat of rain fast approaching. Once the green flag waved, nobody could threaten pole sitter Nico Jamin. The Frenchman opened up the lead from the start while teammate Aaron Tielitz and Jake Edson duped it out in the battle for second. Once Tielitz got in front of Edson for good, the top three remained unchanged for the rest of the race. Jamin's first career USF 2000 victory brought Kate Motorsports with Wayne Taylor Racing to victory lane once again. The first lap that they were fighting hard for the second place, so it gave me a great gap. And then, you know, just don't look back, try to do like uh, good lap times, every lap, uh, don't do any mistake. 
Obviously, Winterfest gave me a great motivation and a great uh, confidence in me, and I guess that helped me to uh, today, yeah. The skies held up on Saturday, but USF 2000 was not as lucky on Sunday morning, racing in the pouring rain. Aaron Tielitz had his luck reversed as well. Tielitz started on pole, but a broken half shaft in the early laps and dropped him out of contention. Victor Franzoni moved into the lead. Nico Jamin stayed close to Franzoni, but could not complete the weekend sweep. Franzoni notched his first victory of the season, the third different winner in four races. St. Pete winner Jake Edson rounded out the podium. Today was really good, the car, uh, the rain, I love the rain. I really like to drive, it's, for me it's amazing. And everything was perfect for today. So I'm really, really happy, it was my first victory in the season. I had a bad weekend in, in St. Pete, so now we are getting close to the championship again to fight. Due to thunder and lightning late on Saturday, Pro Mazda hit the track early on Sunday instead. Andretti Autosports' wear on tan started on pole and resumed his Winterfest battle with Team Pelfrey immediately. Fellow rookie Santiago Arudia was fast on the gas and took the lead on the opening lap. Timothy Bure had a strong start as well. He moved from fourth into third with Junkos Racing and finished on the bottom step of the podium. In the battle for first, Tan took the fight to the 81, but there was no stopping Arudia. He notched his first career Pro Mazda victory. It was my first time here in this track. We did a really good qualifying. On the race, it's, it's really difficult to drive behind some, some cars, so I say, okay, if I want to win the race, I have to move immediately on the start, and I just did it. And then the race was really, really difficult because Wayron was really fast all the race, trying to overtake me in some places. But anyway, for sure, I'm really happy. I have to say thanks to all of my sponsor, Team Perfect, for the great job. JP, it was another awesome event for Mazda Road to Indy here at Nolan Motorsports Park. Unfortunately, the weather kind of throw things up, but we're going next to California Long Beach with Indy Lights. I don't think weather's going to be an issue next in Long Beach. You get to mix some of the best open wheel racing in the world with a vibrant city right on the Pacific Ocean. I can't wait till I see you guys next from California. We'll be back from sunny SoCal.